Hey friends, I'm Jeffy G. About two years ago, I had this idea, wouldn't it be great if you could get everything for free for your music production environment? And that would start with a free digital audio workstation. So I did a lot of research. I found 10 or 15 different DAWs that claimed to be free, but they all had substantial restrictions. Number of tracks, they didn't work with plugins and VSTs, and some you couldn't print. Others wouldn't even let you record audio. So I narrowed down all that research to really just two programs. One was Cakewalk by BandLab, and the other one is Waveform free by traction. Now Cakewalk is only available for Windows and Waveform is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And I came to the conclusion that Apple's Logic for 200 bucks is the best value DAW on the market today. Now I know it's going to be controversial. There's a lot of people out there that have strong feelings about one DAW versus another. And I'll admit, I'm a bit of a logic bigot. I've been using it for more than 25 years and I know it best. But if you stack up all the content, plugins, and instruments that you get with Logic and compare that to the marketplace, you soon realize it's very good value for money. Okay, this section is for people that either haven't seen Logic Pro or haven't seen it in a while. So we're gonna be brief and just cover what's new. Logic Pro looks like a lot of DAWs. It has that horizontal orientation with tracks. It also has a loops mode, competes kind of with Ableton. Some of the features that are in that that make it valuable is this whole move to session players. Session players uses a chord track and there's a bunch of instruments that take advantage of those with AI to create accompaniments for you. You've got a bass player, a keyboard, player, a drummer, studio bass, studio piano, and then you've got the chord track itself. But you're basically defining the chords that are going to control the AI model. And they call that your own personal studio assistant. Now there aren't a lot of DAWs, certainly aren't any free ones that include those capabilities. Then as far as plugins go, they've got a stem splitter, They've added Chroma Glow, pitch correction like Auto-Tune. There's a mastering assistant equivalent to a lot of the mastering tools that are out there and Smart Tempo. These are all included in that one price. You don't have to buy any of this stuff. Now, Apple's one of the few that supports spatial audio, and that's built into Logic. Most of these other DAWs don't have it yet, and if that's something that you want to do, you're kind of limited to only a few products that support it. But you can mix and export your songs as Dolby Atmos using the spatial audio files ready for Apple Music and the other streaming services that take advantage of that. Of course, there's a mixer, and the mixer has now 3D objects built into it since you're dealing with a 3D environment for mixing. Then there's sound packs. Now there's more than 60 sound packs that Apple delivers for free. 72 gigabytes of stuff, uh, loops and drum kits and all kinds of content that you really don't get with any other DAW. Logic has a remote feature so you can use your iPad or your iPhone to control the DAW remotely. Now that doesn't sound that important but it's the only DAW that does this. So if you're a drummer you can sit behind the drums and you can initiate a track, you can click on record and play back and do everything from a distance. I mentioned there's live loops, there's multi-touch mixing, key commands, this is all built into the remote, powerful live loops, a great step sequencer, industry-leading tools. Now, some of the other DAWs have this, flex time or flex pitch, but these things have been highly developed in Logic. Track stacks, track alternatives, project alternatives, BCA faders and automation. You just expect this thing, these things to be here. With instruments, you get more than 25 instruments included, effects, and the sound library. In total, there's 111 plugins. Here's Studio Bass. Here's Studio Piano. We mentioned Chroma Glow, the Stem Splitter, Spatial Audio. Then when we get into instruments, you've, you've got Sample Alchemy, which is a takeoff on the Alchemy sampler that's been there all along, where you can do some layering and resynthesis, which is one of the popular techniques being used in a lot of virtual instruments these days. You've got the big sampler, which has been around for quite a few years, it's very popular. 
And you've got Quick Sampler, which is a great way to create sampled instruments or just deal with loops and samples and do your editing. There's an auto sampler. So if you want to take an old synth and convert it into a sampled instrument, this does it for you. There are many drum kits, including a drum synth. There's Drum Machine Designer, which lets you just drag and drop samples into a kit and save that kit as your own. Or you can pick from hundreds of kits that come delivered. And there's Drum Kit Designer, which is their multi-sampled velocity layered drum kits. Then there's Alchemy, which was acquired by Apple a long time ago. This is a high-end super synth with four oscillators or four sources, extensive modulation. It competes with pigments. Then you get into the studio strings and studio brass, which are excellent sounding. And some of the older synths that come delivered and have always been in Logic, like retro synth, vintage keyboards like the B3, the E-Piano. It has MIDI effects, quite a long list. There's a Mellotron, Clav, and this great physical modeling synth that's been around for a while called Sculpture. Then when you dive into the effects, it gets even more extensive. We've talked about Mastering Assistant. There's Beat Breaker, Remix Effects, Chroma Verb, Pitch Correction, Vintage EQ Collection, which you can see includes a Vintage 2 EQ that works a lot like a Pultec. There's multi-effects like this Step Effects Editor and the Fat Effects. The Compressor, it looks like one, but it's seven in one. Space Designer for your reverbs. It includes over a thousand IR samples. There's the Main Channel EQ, Ring Shifter, Amp Designer, Pedal Boards and Stomp Boxes, bass amp designer. Then when we get into the sound libraries, as I mentioned, it's actually 72 gigs of content, vintage synths, modern synths, vintage keys, acoustic instruments, cinematic and loops, plus all the sound packs and producer packs. It's a lot. And if you had to buy all of these things separately and add them into your free DAW, you're looking at five or $600 worth of plugins and instruments. Look at this sound library. 5,943 total patches for audio, auxiliary, software instruments, and output tracks. 13,000 plus Apple loops. 1,250 sampled instruments. 3,556 Alchemy presets for the Alchemy synth. 1,060 reverb spaces. <laughs> I mean, nothing compares. So here's one of my own songs, and I'm just going to show you parts of that. This thing's big. It's got about 60 tracks in it. As you can see, mixer, I can scroll left and right. It's got a lot of stuff to it. Here's just a raw guitar. So that's just a guitar recorded directly using the Logic amp modeling. It's using this EQ setting. It's using this compressor and it's using this exciter. Those are the only effects on that guitar. And for this drum kit, we're using Drum Machine Designer. And I've created a custom kit. It has all of these sounds in it, three pages of sounds. I've used up the first page and the second page. So we've got 16 samples on the first page and another eight on the second page, and I'm using them all. Then over here, I've created a little brass section of my own with tenor sax, alto sax, two trumpets, and a baritone sax, the studio horns from Logic. And you can include articulation, so whether they are expressive and whether they dive or not, you'll hear that. I did something a little bit funky here. I created a sax solo out of some loops. So you get a sense these are all the different audio types I'm working with. I've got audio that I've recorded. I've got loops that I've assembled together. I've got studio brass instruments that are built into Logic. I'm using the drum machine and I can still record MIDI and all these other parts like organs and keyboards and piano. And 
When it comes to free DAWs, Bedroom Producer did a really good story last year on the best free DAWs out there in the marketplace, and they identified 18 of them. So let's just take a quick look at what they are and what they're missing. The first one on the list is Waveform Free, which I mentioned is available for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And it does allow the support of free VSTs, and it's a full-fledged DAW. There are instruments and other things, not quite as extensive as Logic, but still pretty good. Now, if you're on a Windows platform, Cakewalk by BandLab is the number one choice. In this report, they said it will no longer be supported for a period of time. It's going to be discontinued at some point. We're not sure when. There's actually two platforms from BandLab, both Sonar and Cakewalk. It's currently only available for Windows 64-bit. Then there's Studio One Prime. So Studio One has a whole line of products, but Prime is the free one. Great user interface, but it has no VST support. So if you can't use free plugins, it's quite limited. You're stuck sort of buying all of your plugins from Studio One. Then there's Luna from Universal Audio, and it shows a lot of promise for the future. But at the moment, Luna is really designed to work with all kinds of the plugins from Universal Audio, and they're not cheap. You know, you could easily spend five, six hundred bucks on the plugins just to get Luna up and running. Okay, speaking of Pro Tools, Pro Tools has a free version called Intro. It's based on the same code as the main product, but it provides only eight audio instrument and MIDI tracks. So very limited in terms of how you can use it. It's the way to sort of get you interested in Pro Tools and then upgrade to one of the more expensive versions. Then there's Adur, which is a full-fledged open source DAW. Nothing wrong with open source, except you take the responsibility for building the software yourself. And support for open source is a bit more tricky than when you're dealing with a vendor. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Then there's MPC Beats. It's been around for a while. It's pretty good, it's free, works with VSTs and other plugins, but there's only eight instrument channels. So a little bit limiting. It only runs on Windows 64-bit. Serato, which is quite famous for their samplers and their ability to cut up samples, also has a DAW. It's free, it's a great workflow. If you're coming from a traditional DAW, though, like Logic or Pro Tools or Studio One, this is going to take some getting used to because it's oriented around beat making. Then there's SoundBridge. VST plugin support, a good virtual drum machine is included, but it lacks some of the advanced features that you're finding in other DAWs, like plugins for compression and reverb, drum machines, mastering, those types of things. LMMS has been around for a while. It's pretty good. It just has one problem, no audio recording. <laughs> so how good is a DAW for you if you can't record audio? You're stuck with just MIDI and loops. By contrast to that no audio recording, you've got Audacity, which is all audio, no MIDI, no instrument tracks. I always think of Audacity as a lightweight audio editor, but it is multi-track. Podium Free, another good free DAW. It does have VST support, so you could download a lot of free things, but it's single core processing. There's no rewire, there's no cross-platform compatibility, and it's only available for Windows. Bespoke is a little bit strange. What they've done is come up with a modular design, much like a modular synth. It might be too complicated if you're expecting tracks and mixers and some of the standard things that you see in a DAW, but technically it does fit into that free DAW category. Let's not forget GarageBand. GarageBand is great, but it's all Apple. It's available for Mac and iOS, but it has some shortcomings. It only supports 32 tracks or 72 minutes of recording. It will accept plugins, so all those free plugins you get you could load into GarageBand, but it has no mixer and no master volume. It's really a stepping stone to buying Logic. And last but not least is Reaper. Now Reaper technically is not free. It costs 60 bucks, but the Reaper trial does not really expire. You can keep renewing the trial over and over again. So what you find out there in the marketplace is a lot of people that like Reaper because they see it as continuously free. Now, if you're going to make the argument that Logic is a better investment than a free DAW, you really have to consider price. That's where the rubber hits the road. And it's not just about Logic. You have to look at the competing DAWs and how they're priced. Here's a group of the popular DAWs. 
It isn't everything. There's other DAWs out there like Bitwig and Reaper, but I'm just going to focus on these for the purpose of making this pricing point. Now, Logic is really straightforward. It's sold as just one version that includes everything. You don't have to compare different versions. Pro Tools has only annual subscriptions, and they range in price from $129 a year to almost $800 a year. And those are Canadian prices. I apologize for that. Assume the US prices are about 35% less. Ableton also has different versions, intro, standard, and the full suite. So to get everything from Ableton, you're looking at $779, but you can buy it outright. FL Studio has four different versions. Cubase has three. So if you want everything Cubase has to offer, you're into the $800 range. And Studio One has a range. You can buy their One Pro 7 product outright, or you can subscribe for $180 a year. And that's why I like Logic. You get everything for 250 Canadian or 199 US. You can download it from the App Store really easy to buy and set up. All the others are a little bit complicated. You've got annual subscriptions. Some of them you can buy outright, but you have to compare the different versions to see what you're getting. Maybe you're not getting all the equivalent capabilities that Logic has to offer. So my main point in this video is that you're far better off to start with Logic than you are with a free DAW because of all the content, instruments, and plugins that are included. But there's more going on here. The true cost of Logic would be in the thousands of dollars, except that Apple uses both GarageBand and Logic to subsidize the purchase of Mac hardware, which is typically more expensive than a Windows PC. Now, personally, I believe that that platform is the best for creative types, whether you're into music production, video, or photography. Apple has dominated that space for a long time. But if you look at the total landscape for music production, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of virtual instruments and plugins that you can get for free. And some of them are great. They're very powerful. It's a great way to save money. But you need a base DAW to load that stuff. And you need some core functionality for recording audio, MIDI, virtual instruments, and a place where you can do mixing and mastering. And that's what drives you into the selection of one digital audio workstation versus another. And in this video, I've tried to avoid getting into a debate about one DAW versus another. I don't think it really matters. If you're efficient at creating songs in Ableton Live or Pro Tools or Cubase, good for you. Use the DAW that makes the most sense. My main reason for focusing on Logic by Apple is that it only costs $199, which is a small investment for beginners. And Logic's been around a long time. It's a very stable product that's used by many professionals. If you found this video interesting or useful, click on the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel and click on the notification bell if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.